This project is supported by local land services through funding from the Australian Government's National Land Care Program, AgriFutures Australia, Regional Development Australia and the University of Sydney. This is an exciting project taking place in the northwest of New South Wales around Narrabri, a networking and knowledge sharing project which is about connecting Indigenous people, industry and growers with the latest research to support an economically, culturally, socially and environmentally sustainable native grains industry. The project is about investigating and promoting opportunities for using native grains, particularly native millet, for food production. I'm Dr Angela Patterson. I work for the University of Sydney's Indigenous Grasslands for Grain project. The goal of the Native Grains project is to bring together ancient knowledge with modern knowledge in a respectful way so that we can revitalise the practice of eating and growing native grain foods that are local to this area. By doing the research, we're helping to support from the paddock all the way through to the plate, the bits that are missing in the puzzle. So this practice of harvesting native grains has been going on for thousands of years, um, but the context of the, the modern market has changed. So what we need to do is find out what things need to happen that will allow this to um, be happening economically and environmentally and socially and culturally. So it's this um, four-pronged sustainability approach to being able to bring back native grains as a food. From a, a farmer's or a landowner's perspective, the native grains are a perennial species. So it differs a little bit from wheat or, or barley or oats, which are annuals. Um, these are perennials. So in terms of managing your country, um, they're really special. They bring back biodiversity, sequester more carbon, um, and they're also much more resilient um, as, a, as a crop. Um, having said that, their yield per year is, is less in almost every circumstance um, that a normal wheat crop would be grown. So what we're trying to do is, is being able to find a way that we can see these advantages of these crops um, come back for country and for people. There's lots of sub parts of this project, as you can imagine, from paddock all the way through to the plate. What we're trying to look at, my project specifically, is looking at the threshing part of the native grain system. So when we're trying to get it from a, a paddock, um, which is a raw grain, into a food quality product, what equipment do we need, what processes do we need, and what sort of knowledges can we bring from the Indigenous community and from the modern community of technology and what other communities from overseas that have had experience in these sorts of um, hard to process grains and how can we bring all that together to be able to make it cheap enough and tasty enough to make it onto people's plates. For most people, they're surprised at how hard it is. Even doing it by hand, you can rub and rub and rub and it's still not come out of it, it's husk. So most people get surprised, um, but also intrigued about, okay, well, this is a challenge. How can we figure out um, the, the secret that will crack these grains open so that we can mill them into flour? We're really privileged to be working with LLS and Landcare to do a bit of an on-country trial this coming summer. So we're um, finding some farmers as part of this workshop and through our networks, um, that actually have native millet already on their properties and then connecting them with people that are interested in processing these into a food, um, particularly from the Indigenous community and bringing everyone together so we can actually go out for real this summer, not in a research context, but for real um, and do it on country. And by being able to do that, that means it's the, it's the next step in seeing the industry um, start locally. Um, we can talk about it and I can do some research on it, but unless the right people are ready to start their own businesses or enterprises or operations, um, it'll just be talk. So I'm really excited that this is no longer just in a research project. This is going to happen for real life um, in this coming summer. I've always been interested in native grasses and when Angela started this up, I thought it was an opportunity to pursue that a bit. Uh, there's been a, a, a grass association in New South Wales called Stiper. And it's folded up just recently, and I thought this might be a, an era, an area, to keep the native grass interest going. Uh, just following on from what Angela's been um, doing, we hope to collect some tall oak grass seed at one stage, she and Kerry, and um, <clears throat> I guess, and uh, we've looked for a few other grasses, and um, haven't really found enough of them to be of any use. Oh, just by hand, cutting them, putting them in bundles, putting them in bags and um, bring them up here.
Yeah, it's difficult to thrash. It's a difficult grass. Yes, I think um, there was a couple of uh, grasses, the, the thing I call river grass. I'm not sure what all the names are, but Paspalidium species. Uh, one of those is shot grass, which has got quite a big seed. And the other two <coughs> are perhaps a bit better, a bit better known. Uh, one's Dubiflorum, uh, Warrigo grass. And um, there's a couple of others which are very promising, very well adapted to flooding. And uh, if we could um, harvest some seed from one of those when, it's, when it matures uh, a bit later on, uh, that might be worth trying. Some, it might be worth trying to bring some up here for Angela. Uh, I think it's an industry with the future, but I think it's something that people could support. Uh, both foundations could support it financially, and if we can get enough volunteers, and uh, certainly um, the cultural side of it is quite important. I think this is something we should do to encourage that side of it. Yeah, my name is Les Knox. I'm uh... Uh, a local elder in Narrabri and um, I um, had discussions a couple of years ago with um, our local chamber of commerce. They sent me out to talk to Angela and she told me about this native grains. So I said, yep, I'll get involved with that. Yeah, look, I went and uh, uh, registered and got an ABN and um, I've um, uh, registered my name as Gara Gundal, which in our local Gomoroi uh, name and language means bush bread. So it's to do with the native grains and the flour being able to make bread. So it's uh, Gara Gundal. Well, I think it's important because it's an opportunity to create some jobs for uh, young local, local people and teach them about the uh, culture in the past. And um, and, and it's also a, a good opportunity, I think, for the local shire to you know, have a good name. Well, I do recall, I spent my early years on Tumala, and I do recall uh, mum making some bread at times, but that was a long time ago. Or, and we moved to Narrabah when, when I was seven year old because my dad started working on the railways. And uh, sort of, because you're not involved in it, over the years, you tend to forget a little bit about all the processes. Yeah, but but sort of what sparked me was I remember looking at a photo one day of when Europeans first came here, they had some local men in chains. They might have been in chains though because they didn't have the weapons to defend against rifles. And But had a look at their bodies, trim, taut and terrific they were because they were eating all the natural bush foods. Yeah, Angie's really been great with this. Um, she's a great uh, supporter of what we're doing. Oh, look, she's been a tower of strength, uh, uh, giving me information about about the um, project and the Mitchell grass. So that's why I wanted to uh, set up a, an ABN and set this up as a business and with the opportunity to create some local employment as well. Yeah, the team working at it, we've got Angela, Kerry, um, Kylie, and, uh, oh, and Di, yeah. And they've been showing me all the processes with um, what they do when the Mitchell, as, as far as even going and picking the Mitchell grass uh, from the field, so uh, from a paddock to the plate sort of thing, and find out what goes on in between. So there's a whole process of work to be done. But once, once it's done, there's many good things that come from it. Yeah, in January, we'll have access to, um, there, there's a number of places where we can go and, and uh, do the threshing to, um, to get it in here to be done. Um, so that'll create some employment for at least a dozen people. But not just the employment, they'll also have to attend TAFE a couple of days a week. So they will get a accreditation for what they've done. I heard whispers, and through the Chamber of Commerce, um, we will have access to many of the areas that we need to. Uh, we just had some young fellows here that work with the um, uh, the local land service up near Bogger Miller and Moree, and they've got lots of uh, 
council land they can uh, show me that we can use. Yeah, it's a great variety. Um, it's not just one or two little things like I thought it would be when I first came out here, but yeah, there's a whole range of uh, beautiful uh, food that can be made. Yeah, I reckon in five years' time we could have, have our own mill set up here in the local area where we can um, manufacture all, all we need.